Hello, and welcome to not the answer of what the free she shells are and how to use them, but the answer to what's the steelbook look like? Hello, before I start waffling on, if you want to see me unboxing it, skip forward to the video until you see me like this, then go, ah, that's the unboxing, because this is weird, wacky, but wonderful. Enjoy it until I come back. Can you see the poster in the background? There's been disaster. Can you tell I've got cold? Here's a few, should be outtakes, but they're not outtakes, and the ghost happened to have appearance as well. You can see this video's going really well. I feel like I have just been de defrosted. I'm full of cold and the aftermath of it. Oh, but Demolition Man is out on Blu-ray. I'm just going to say it. How the fuck did that happen? Now that you've just seen that in slow motion, and I'm not talking in slow motion, it's just I'm loaded with cold. Hence why I put the light on. It might have moved in succession. Succession? There's a word that doesn't exist. Succession? Did you click on this video and think you were going to see a normal unboxing of just my hands? Bet you did. So thumbs down, and that's it. Or thumbs up, because this is a little bit different. Okay, so you've seen a few clips, apologies, uh, you've probably clicked on this video going, Right, I want to see the unboxing of uh, Demolition Man. Well, buy it. <laughs> Sorry. Disastrous. Uh, obviously, I'm full of cold. We're having camera issues. I actually got a brand new camera. It's a twin of this one. The flip screen starting to twist and break, and then the mic needs to not be plugged in when you're shutting it, and it's... The audio would have been all over the place, there's shadows on my face, I haven't set the big camera up, it's daylight outside, but I've picked this shot because of the poster. Is that okay? Hello and welcome to one of the worst unboxings you may see of Demolition Man, so thumbs up for the effort of making it that bad. Ah, oh, Slime. Aha! Right. Okay. Not that way, light on it. Right, let's get this right. Someone put me back in the fridge. Demolition Steven. Self-destruction of a lunatic. That's what this video should have been called. It wasn't meant to be a weird, wacky, but wonderful. It was like, look, look what the postman brought me. It's not out yet. Let's do something. No, it's not. <laughs> it's just completely and utterly. Pace of utter love for Demolition Man. Okay, right. Demolition Man. That thing when it first came out at the video shop, I was like, can't wait to see that, the poster. And I'm over the moon to own a one sheet, I really, really am. Like, of all the one sheets in this room, this one has never changed. Waterworld, I think, was Son in Law originally. Prayer of the Roller Boys was Last Resort. Last Resort was Hard Rain. Then it was the unbearable weight of massive talent with Nicolas Cage. Then it was Vampires, then it was a thing. Then Last Resort came back in. But Demolition Man has never moved. Might have moved in sequence because I'm sure originally Demolition Man was there, but whatever. So in here, the UV room, it pops, it glows, water world pops, and there's a nice concession. And like the orange pops, so Salone, Snipes, Arty Farty with the E's and the lines. 21st century's most dangerous cop, 21st century's most ruthless criminal. The future isn't big enough for both of them. And there's so much going on in that poster. Like to me, these guys pop in the UV, like how they've done the background and the font and it looks like there's a hidden message here and you can see a T and an A and an M, Tam and a P and hopefully it says seven. I was going to say, is that spell tampon? But there's so much and even with the UV lights, the, the font starts to pop and you can see he's got his button there and it's just class. You can just see Snipe's hair as well. So again, absolutely amazing artwork, like really good. And the artwork has changed hasn't changed, hasn't changed. So the laser disc is the same as the Blu-ray, it's the same as the DVD. And it's gonna be interesting to see what the steelbook's like, because I haven't seen the steelbook, and we don't need the light back on. So as I've got my steam back, and here we go. I have Demolition Man, and you've probably seen it now. It worked, I keep the wrong alphabetical order. Now it's just become chaos. That's me lying on the floor in the background, the mic wasn't plugged in, but again, I am suffering so much with this. I have Demolition Man on Blu-ray, somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> just somewhere, files somewhere in the void. So again, Demolition Man, 
I've got my go-to and it's this Saloon box set. Now Warner Brothers, so we're going to talk about Warner Brothers here because there's an interesting theory with this. Cobra, Assassins, Tango and Cash, the Specialist and Demolition Man. The Specialist, Assassins and Cobra haven't seen the day on their own. Cobra, maybes, when Blu-rays first came out. But Specialist and that. But Demolition Man is in here and it's got the extra features with the audio commentary, which is really interesting with the director as well. And as I say, retail's about $15.99. at the average price. You can get it maybe down to a tenner at some places sometimes. Packed there. And look at that. It says, not for resale. How do you get away with a crime exchange? Anyway, um, recently there's been different editions and stuff like that. And just one I picked up as an example, Event Horizon Steelbook. Big package there. Bit of dust on that. Mint documentary. Jam-packed. Arty farty Steelbook. Uh, button badges. Pins, you name it, it's even got I think a map in it of uh, the, the actual uh, Vent Horizon ship itself. So it's a lot going on. And there's a lot of these editions coming out. Mad Max, Road Warrior, Mad Max 2, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Stephen losing his breath. They've just come out recently as well. These Cine editions, these first editions, packed. And then Demolition Man dropped in. Demolition Man's been delayed uh, about a month, I think, originally from its original release. And I was like, is that not in 4K? Because it's not on 4K. Now it's part of Warner Brothers 100th year anniversary stuff. Now I've been absolutely over the moon with what they've done this year because they've released Pump Up the Volume and One Crazy Summer, two of my favorite films as a kid. And they're actually out, out on Blu-ray. One Crazy Summer, completely missed. DVD, Pump Up the Volume, had a brief. I still want that back, Christian sir. I borrowed you a DVD, I expect it back. Anyway, um, they've seen came out. So like what Warner Brothers could do with the archive you know, and bringing these films out, it's very interesting. They're firing them out, they've got the American style, they're proper slim. Why don't I show you one of them? Bum, bum, bum. I actually watched this again a few nights ago. Amazing film, amazing film. Different artwork from its original VHS, and I really need to show them shelves out in that other room because, like, One Crazy Summer, not an alphabetical, buried in the scene to be filed. The scene to be filed is almost like an entire hoard of a collection. So, you clicked on this video to see an unboxing. I apologise. This is Lonely Train Entertainment, the weird, the wacky, the wonderful. A lot of people do some great videos in depth, nice shots, nice lightning, and stuff like that. I am loaded with cold. I am battling through. I could have done an unboxing of a new camera. I don't want to do it. But I do absolutely love Demolition Man. So get my steam back. Here we go again. So, yeah, Demolition Man, the laser disc. That's not what we're unboxing, Stephen. But yeah, the most entertaining few drastic film since The Terminator. Storyline's mint, artwork's mint, characters are mint. There should have been a sequel in the 90s. Is this guy going to get the unboxing? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But what I'm saying is, while I'm on a rant, and my body is letting me rant, um, there should have been a sequel instead of Dread, I would say. Because the time's gone. If they're trying to do a Demolition Man 2, and I know there's been rumours of doing it, it's like, not going to happen. What are you going to say? Like, the guy who escaped the cryo prison has been mastering a plan for 30 years. And it's like, ooh, fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? If they did it in the 90s, uh, a couple of years later, they could have, and I always visioned this, Van Damme with a mullet, staring down, and obviously I'm a fan of Christian Slater. I always thought Christian Slater there, and I thought, like, just sort of a gang, Sloan going against a gang, um... Or an antagonist. I always thought, oh, who could be the next guy who creates... Like, because they've got all them cryo things and, like, Jack Black was one of them and Jesse Ventura's in there. But, like, there could have been so much more. But, again, in the 90s, you didn't really have them massive crossovers. So that's why this is such a big fucking deal. Snipes would work with Connery. Snipes would then go off to do his own stuff with, like, Drop Zone and stuff like that. But Snipes seems to be... You wouldn't get Sloane in Schwarzenegger for years. You wouldn't get Sloane Van Damme for years. Uh, it's a gal, never, didn't want to work with any fucker. Um, but again, that's why this was so big. It was like, it's rocky, but not rocky, if you know what I mean. It's like, yeah. But again, it's John Spartan, an underrated character of Salones. He's funny, he's witty, but he's also badass. And I think Simon Phoenix, hands down, fucking one of the best villains in a movie for how lethal he can be, but how funny he can be as well. He's vicious. So, the Goon to sequel, there was a few video games and stuff like that and the score has never been released and it was something I would just throw money down straight away. I think they could have a lot of fun, do you know what I mean, with the design of it. 
um, especially with what's your boggle and there's some really great artwork out there in a minute you know it could be a double vinyl one side spot and one side phoenix so anyway let's get to the unboxing hello so i'm back <laughs> get the intro did you skip forward did you watch me waffle for ages so yeah this is the actual unboxing right now came in a bit more light da -da 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 -da. bum 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 so water bros over the top actually covers salon snipes is that a bit of a boo-boo? But again, do you keep the flip covers? Now, from the back of the box, 30th anniversary steelbook. I have no idea why this is not 4K. And to be honest with you, Warner Brothers seems to be one company that's not rushing with 4K. Except they do weird stuff. Gremlins, the Goonies, they have been out. Uh, I think they dropped a clanger a few weeks ago, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, being a Blu-ray, but and, and it was a manufacturing fault. The Exorcist has just seen quite a few different... Uh, releases as well um, so it's interesting what Warner Brothers do um, again they are pushing forward this but this is a very interesting edit for HMV to get exclusive as well so it's a 15 it's always been a 15 um, and as I said it's got the anniversary includes a film in blu-ray <laughs> film in blu-ray brilliant um, steelbook uh, rigid sleeve so that's interesting Again, I have no idea what the steelbook looks like. It's still book. Um, a poster. Uh, I've got a poster. Double-sided art cards. That's really cool. Uh, oh, yeah, it actually shows you. So there's going to be no surprise of what's on the front cover of the steelbook anyway. Um, and special features from the original is uh, audio commentary by the director and Joel Silver. So obviously Joel Silver did a lot of the action movies you probably grew up and loved in the in 80s and 90s. So, yeah. Um, art card there on the top so addition so it's absolutely no different to the variant that's been out as a standalone and also in that slow box set um so again why it's not a 4k disc like event horizon uh, hopefully you've seen event horizon and i am that ill i can't even i can't even break plastic this is my choice of my new unboxing i've inherited this off my granddad this as must have been used so many times. I couldn't throw it out when I had to clear the house out because of how much food and abuse that must have had. It's actually like carved in, but anyway, I stabbed myself. There you go. That made the video more entertaining. Um, so yeah, as I said, I was just going to do a quick unboxing. Oh, look at this. And then I realized I've got too much love for this movie. And I'm taking so much delicate with it, even though I just the ghost, whatever it did before it dropped it. So, yeah, okay, what's on the back? Oh, it's got that stuff. See, almost impossible. Whoosh, okay. Now, I don't keep them, but again, when I the reason you should keep them, I'm gonna say this now, is when you got your steelbooks together and you're like, oh, what do you want? You film in the commentary. Unless you've got that, you ain't gonna know it's got a company on. So you'll put something on. Like Ghostbusters 2, and you go, I'll listen to that company, don't have one. You think, why does Ghostbusters 2 not have a commentary? Anyway, dun dun dun. John Spartan on the back. Now, look at that. The glue's bubbled out already. So let's give that a, a good old fashioned rub. Let's see the bubs there. There's a, another box out a while ago. I can't remember what it was. It actually, I mean, Simply sticky it is, right? Jesus. Um, I remember taking the packaging off. It might have been a vent horizon. Anyway. Um, that's nice, sits on the cover. Uh, obviously the stickers can come off and I think, you know, I'm gonna take that 15 off the spine. And there's been a lot of controversy recently with um, Bloodsport was a good one. Bloodsport and Satan's Little Helper when, you know, the artwork's been done and then the products have been like recalled and stuff because they haven't had the, the certification printed on them. And it's a weird it's a weird one because like as a collector, you know, but to sell stuff, I'm just gonna take these all off while I'm waffling. I think like you know, these kind of editions, peeling them off, sitting on the shelf without ratings, I mean it's two to fifteen. It's got the Irish ones on and Ireland really don't do much physical media these days, do they? We're getting there. So, when I told you to skip forward, when you see me, probably should have said skip forward to now. 
but again I'm not doing it for monetization or anything I'm doing it because I like this film so what's your bottle hmm? right Anyway, I should have had a fucking swear count and go beep <laughs> every time I said fuck or something like that. That's one of the best things in the film. What? Fuck you. There we go. So yeah, it looks nice. Obviously, I'm happy they've kept it. The very sharp picture, again, um, it does feel like it's been printed on top of like recycled cardboard, I would say. Again, a bit more sticky there. Demolition Man. As I say, you can see Snape's hair. It's It's got like a quite a... Um, Glossy shine to it a little bit. I don't even catch that really much. But yeah, so let's have a look inside. <coughs> eh. Oh. Wow. The reason why I smelt it like that, right? Fucking hell. That's new and fresh when I got the laser disc this afternoon and opened it together. Right? <laughs> Yuck. Uck. There you go. 30 years difference. How it smells now. You know what it'll smell in 30 years? Yeah, pretty much. Anyway. So there's a little, little, <clears throat> little demolition man. Little leaves up there. Wow. First look at the steelbook. It's fucking gorgeous. That's really, really nice. Um, personally, I might have just dropped the font entirely. I think the box does it enough. You get, you're getting it in the box. I think the font maybe could have gone from that. And obviously the orange I like from the original poster is gone, so not as pop, but that, again, it's such a strong image, but I think the background is so underrated. It, you know, it's got this really good 3D effect to it. Oh, but on the back, dun dun dun, a smudge. Now that's a shame with the back, I'm not going to lie, because at the end of the day, they might have gone one on the other, because they could have had Sloan there and Snipes there, but then the problem would have been, Snipes would have been on the front, and Sloan probably wouldn't have had that, but then they would have flipped it, and everyone like myself would have went, they've got them the wrong way around, but you know, um, it is a bit of a shame, the back actually, even if they could have uh, the orange font, maybe, there's a little bit of a dint, that's a ghost, it's dinted it. A little bit of a nit there. Again, they've got the credits down there. Um, yeah, it's pretty much of a disappointment. It almost feels like they've zoomed into this area and then blurred, slightly blurred it. P. Yeah, all they've really done there for the back is zoomed in and cropped. But again, it's an awesome movie. Ah, see. And inside's blank as well. And a blue disc. So. There is so much they could have done with that. Snipes kicking somebody um, that he does um, shoot out in the gallery. Um, there is so much they could have done with that. So that generally, even though they're tr trying to keep it the matrixy kind of thing, I think that is quite a lot. Like 187, murder, death, kill. Um, they could have had... Um, wait, fuck. The cryopod on the back, the Sloan, he's artificial nubby, you know. So yeah, it's a bit disappointing actually. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, it's a mint. I mean, it's a mint movie, but what's this? This is quite bad Photoshop. <laughs> anyway, next up, Dennis Leary could have been on it. You know what I mean? Be well <laughs> could have been on the back. Sandra Bullock. So, what are you getting here? Dun dun dun. So, choice for insert in the steelbook one, so long with nipples out. Wesley Snipes there, a great still that. These are nice recycled cards. There you go, that's an amazing picture of Sandra Bullock. So, why not have that on the back of the box and show her some credit because she is awesome in this as well. These are nice art cards actually. Oh, yeah. Wesley Snipes in rehearsal. The guy doing a front flip. Must have just found that. That is so random if that's the only one. It is. That is so random. I mean, it's a great picture. I mean, that's, you know. All right. Oh! <laughs> There's stuff on the back. He was a great character. Looks like he just sort of fell out of Beetlejuice. 
Um, there you go. Great one for inside. Them swinging. Yeah, that could have been on there. I see such a good photo of snipes as well. And then another set behind the set photo as well. I love like the 90s ones as well though, when they're like um, Super Mario Brothers and any kind of like unworldly, like still holding on to the uh, Wrigley Scott's Blade Runner style, you know, but doing it all in like a studio and not having green screen or matte paintings and that and just like industrial warehouse and dark and dingy futuristic shit. It's good. So there's no like badge. Uh, could have had Rob Snyder on it. We're police officers. No, no, meant to be trained like that. Now this is another thing. I've said this before a few times. So this goes back to like, you know, your original quads and all that when they're folded and they used to go in the film cans. Uh, they've completely lost the, the orange in there. So again, um, it's not, it's weird because it's quite chopped actually. But considering you've seen the poster in the other room, um, it's lost a lot of colour um, and there's nothing on the back. And that is when you reach out and look at people like Glenn Malpass, Two Frag, Lincoln Lightfoot, Glenn Miller, The Dude Designs, Afron Jones, the list goes a hundred miles along of great artists like Theo, even Theo, um, could like do a concept competition. Do you like Demolition Man? Enter your artwork and it'll be printed on the flip side, rather than just nothing. You know, because there's so much out there. But another thing I don't like about these is, if you get it, you should get a little card, a little coupon. And if you're a real collector, and you went, right, okay, go on the website, put the code in, you pay the postage, and then through the door comes a rolled one, and something that you can actually put on the wall and go, that's that film. So, on a scale of one to five, the movie's mint, a big love of it, so that's good, but this could have been so much more. So I'm gonna stick it around about a two, because I think the artwork lets it down a bit on the steelbook. And um, the art cards are random as shit. You know, there's a couple of art cards here, and then you've got some of the nibbles. Um, but again, with that picture on the back, why is that on the back of the steelbook? Do you know what I mean? Nice enough picture. On the back of the steelbook, uh, there's a disc. You know what I mean? That picture is slow and creeping around. I mean, Christ, the explosion at the start. Like him jumping out the helicopter, anything in the box. But happy to own it and I don't even have to watch it, the disc, because it's exactly the same what was in there. So, see you in the outtakes. <laughs>Anyway, what I was trying to say before I realised the mic was done and my voice is really bad, so I definitely need a mic on. Um, that poster, as a kid, I always remember that coming out, the countdown of that coming out. I was a fan of Salone for Mary's First Blood, not too much Rambo. Um, <laughs> uh, Mary's First Blood, not Rambo. I am a fan of it being called First Blood, and that's a fucking outtake. So... Oh, fuck me, I'm so ill. If they did an addition like that, right, right there. Hello, so at the very end, so you've obviously been over outtakes and I'm back here in this room. If they did that, because I've left it out there, <laughs> just pump up the volume, I would like, take my money now. So again, it's weird that that's not 4K. So if that had been 4K, it would have been fine because you get in a steelbook, and then the R cards are the R cards. But then do they pull it out? So again, random. So not as random as an outtake, because this doesn't have a hole. Because this wasn't meant to be a one sheet. But it's not a one sheet. <laughs> it's a quad. And what's it a quad of? Dun, 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 dun. So I was wondering, could it be a baddie? Dun, 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 dun. Expendables for which I have not seen yet. So yeah, just gonna wait for it to come out because the Meg came out so quick. I don't need to go that way, I need to go this way. But I was gonna say this glows. So the one sheet might be a nice addition to the room for color. Cause I really love the Expendables, I really do. I love them as a franchise. 
And yeah, the third one could have been a lot better, but what I wonder is, why is Wesley Snipes not back in this one? Makes no sense. Where's Snipes? Cruz is not in it. Keep Snipes in it. So, ah, just kind of, I mean, it didn't make any sense as well. Snipes is friends with Stephen. But, if you haven't seen a true story, Wesley Snipes and Kevin Hart, watch that because that shows you that Wesley Snipes is back in the modern era and absolutely shit hot. So make sure you check that out. And yeah, Salon, baby. Um, I've got a new good to bad on the what the fuck's to start for Salon. It'll be his final one, so this might kick start it. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope you don't get this cold that's going around. Goodbye for now.